It is time now for my top 10 favorite films of the year. I didn't see everything, but these are the ones I loved. We're going to do the uh, first batch of five here. We'll take a break, and then we'll count down from five to one. Starting off at number 10, the Sam Mendes war epic. 1917. This is a technical marvel featuring the year's best cinematography, some wonderful music, editing, acting, and direction. Height of the First World War, two British soldiers have to cross into enemy territory and deliver a message, and it's a prestige war picture that uses unraveling tension and haunting beauty to maximum effect, and it's all edited to make it look like it's one continuous shot. What a big screen triumph. Number nine, Pain and Glory, the 21st feature from Spanish O'Toole. Pedro Almodovar. I love this movie. Deeply poignant, full of gorgeous visuals, just brimming with passion and a really personal, mature piece of art for the longtime director. Career best performance for Antonio Banderas, who took away best actor at Cannes in a role that parallels the director's own relationship with the actor. Some really interesting uh, real life parallels here in the movie and some beautiful flashbacks to uh, his childhood. The Banderas character in this movie is essentially playing a version of El Madovar. So a great film there. Quentin Tarantino's ninth film, Once Up Upon a Time in Hollywood gets my number eight spot. And this is a surprisingly sensitive love letter to the bygone days of Tinseltown, jammed with his signature style. All takes place in 1969, right before the Manson murders. And you know he's going to give you some revisionist history. Memorable music, outstanding acting, wistful, hilarious, disturbing, violent. It's all wrapped up in one glorious, self-indulgent trip down memory lane. Number six. Number seven. The Grizzlies, one of the fiercest and most powerful Canadian dramas. I have ever seen. Director Miranda De Pontier's 10-year odyssey results in a beautiful, occasionally heartbreaking, but ultimately uplifting story. It combines elements of a classic sports drama with a uniquely Canadian twist. In 1998, you saw there, based on true events, a teacher goes to a remote Inuit community where they are suffering from high suicide rates, and he introduces them to the sport of lacrosse. A Canadian classic was born in this film. And number six, Apollo 11. Yes, I'm including a documentary. But this is essential viewing about the 1969 lunar voyage, painstakingly crafted, meticulously detailed. They should show this thing in schools. Doesn't rely on any narrative voices, only the raw material conjured up from a treasure trove of audio recordings, 65 millimeter footage, completely immersive. And they conjure a riveting tale of human innovation that marked a global celebration of our achievements during one of history's, well, biggest turning points when it comes to, came to technology. And it also cautions us to not lose that endeavoring spirit. Absolutely love this film. Coming up, we'll look at five to one. Now, my top five favorite films of 2019. There are a lot of movies I saw, some good, some bad, but these are my favorites. Coming in at number five, The Lighthouse. Yes, this is from Robert Eggers, black and white, 35 millimeter, that boxy, old-timey aspect ratio. It's a fever dream of a movie, a spellbinding tale. Robert Pattinson, Willem Dafoe have never been better. They play lighthouse keepers on a remote New England Island in the 19th century. My goodness, the Shakespearean dialogue reflecting the setting's time period elevates the whole thing to lofty heights. It's got a visual style motif and mood that was flawlessly executed. I love this movie. It stayed with me for weeks. It is a haunting, beguiling tale that is not to be missed. Number four, The Farewell. What a touching, beautiful family drama from director Lulu Wong. Pitch perfect matriarchal drama with laughs uh, to spare. Tender family portrait that saw Aquafina solidify herself as a serious actor. One of the finest scripts brought to life with endearing performances, genuine emotion. Don't go to this movie hungry as well. The food shots are sumptuous. Won the audience award at Sundance. Number three, Marriage Story. Writer director Noah Baumbach, searingly brilliant tale of a relationship that just doesn't work anymore unflinchingly honest, mesmerizing acting from Adam Driver and Scarlett Johansson and an excellent supporting cast, Laura Dern, Ray Liotta, Alan Alda, Julie Haggerty. Just a masterful, achingly beautiful script. Number two, The Irishman. Martin Scorsese proves he is still master of his genre, a sprawling crime saga in terms of length for sure, but also in storytelling and character building led by formidable work from De Niro, Pacino, especially Joe Pesci. Cutting edge digital de-aging effects. One of the director's most accomplished works proving once again uh, after all these years crime does not pay. 
Number one, my favorite film of the year. We go all the way to South Korea for Parasite. It was matchless in terms of movies this year. A masterpiece dark comedy weaving a satirical examination of class structure under capitalism from acclaimed director Bong Joon-ho. It ventures into horror a little bit. A proudly Korean film with universal themes that became an instant classic. Won the top prize at Cannes. The decade may be drawing to a close, but Parasite undoubtedly ranks among the finest films of the last 10 years. That is why it's my number one pick of 2019. There you go. We'll put it online so you can consult and uh, check those out at your earliest convenience.